Cowboys quarterback once said, here we go. It's John Radigan here and Nate Newton there. And at some point in the next 30 to 45 minutes, Nate's going to get that look in his eye. Oh, yeah. He's going to look at a camera and he's yeah. going to say, let me tell you something. I'm telling you, boy, it's yeah. exciting. Rad, go where you want to, today, man. I'm all over the place from mine and the NHL, the NBA, the NFL, the Major League Baseball, two of the two of the four I can talk about fluently. The other two, I'm going to rely on you. <laughs> That's no problem because it is, man. The, I, we talked last time about how the month of April is the busiest, best month in sports of the year. But, man, it continues in May for fans of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. No doubt about that. The Stars advanced in seven games. The Mavericks just got rid of the Clippers. Of course, the Cowboys have a rookie camp this week. And the Rangers have started to play a little bit more like the Rangers from 2023. They've gotten back to like five or six games over 500. So they're playing a little bit better now, but let us, uh, and we're going to touch on a lot of that, uh, but let's start, uh, Nate, with the Cowboys and that, and that rookie camp this week, all those draft picks that we heard about and saw and all that stuff, they're coming in this week. Let me take you all the way back to your rookie year. A, did they even have a rookie camp? It it was. And, 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 Rad, it was physical. It was mental. It was hard pressing. It was three practices a day in some cases. Wow. It was three to four days. Uh, You literally had to tape your wrist, tape your fingers. Uh, We're going to have on helmets. Uh, It it was brutal, man. It was brutal. I mean, uh, now it's all about mental. It's all about in the classroom. It's all about making sure you know the plays. that was that was back when you could have a hundred rookies, you know, along with the first year guys in there. So you can have a hundred ten guys running around, and you would have enough guys at position, at every position, and uh, and, and you would be competing. That that thing, but you would start competing that day about where uh, you know uh, wow. how the coach is looking at you, how you carry yourself, and man, the training staff was running around with their head cut off trying to. Uh, mend up these little nicks and knacks that we had. All right, so you you come from a, a, a small school at yes. that point, did you, but you're a confident man, Nate. Did you walk in to that environment with confidence, or did you walk in going, oh, man, there's Coach Landry over there. This is the Cowboy. There's that guy from Auburn over there and that guy from you know Alabama or whatever over there. I mean, or how did you walk into that? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I remember wide-eyed. Uh Behind mentally, definitely was behind mentally. Not that I couldn't comprehend. It's just had never, if you've never seen it before. And then people going 100 miles an hour. uh, And I came into a team that had just uh, either went to an NFC championship game and I was the Washington uh, Redskins back then. And that thing was uh, was special, man, because uh, this team was prepped and ready to go. Uh, after that year, I got released. They went and won the Super Bowl down in Tampa, I, I think. So they, uh, this team was a veteran team with Coach uh, Coach Gibbs and uh, the, the Hogs and the, and these little Smurfs or whatever they was running around there with Joe Thousand. They they was ready, man. They had Rigo on the offensive uh, running back. So this team was primed and ready to go. And I was behind. I was so mentally behind. Physically, I could deal, but mentally, I was so far behind. And how far, how far along did you make it before they did let you go? The last uh, cut, uh, Coach Gibbs did not want to cut me, but I did not do the things that were correct and stand on that team. If I would just show a little bit of discipline, a little bit of maturity, I, I probably would have been a Washington commander. And uh, and uh, but as things worked out. God looks down on his Cowboys and, hey, I see. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you got to the Cowboys the next year? Uh, no, I went to the USFL for two years. Two years, okay. And played there and uh, had great success. And and then a, a guy came along and uh, folded us. I'm not going to call his name. He's one of your ex-presidents. Yeah. I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know him. We all know him, whether you love him or hate him. You're yeah, always yeah. doing something, bro. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, what are these rookies in for? Anything physical at, at rookie camp? Uh, no, nah, they're not going to get physical. They're not going to let them get like that. They, like I say, they're trying to make sure that they're, that they're mentally up on their plays, mentally knowing what to do. So when the thing becomes physical, they can play as fast as they can play, uh, you know, within the rules of uh, the the, the uh, practice uh, times that you can have. It's just going to be about looking at guys' bodies, making sure you the trainers tap into what, uh, ailments or what uh, things that they had on their records before they were drafted, assigned as free agents, you know, look into that a little bit more to see what they can find, if anything. And uh, then, you know, they have a bunch of new guys, rookies that they're going to uh, be just looking at uh, tr- in a trial form. So it's going to be about just looking at guys' bodies, seeing if they what you thought they were. Uh, um, and then and then the mental part is really what, uh, captures a coach. If you can just start regurgitating that stuff out on the field, but they showing you in the classroom and lining up in the right place and running the right route, ra- ra- right routes and stuff like that, that can advance you too. Okay. So in your day, you had the physical aspect to allow you to separate yourself from a lot of people, right? right. You could be stronger, bigger, right. faster, more energetic, whatever. These guys only have, I mean, how do they separate themselves? Just by being in the right place when they being take the it right to the practice place, field? Uh, understanding what the coaches want. Uh, draft picks automatically get, uh, they get they get first dabs. You know, you, you know, uh, Guyton is going to be your left guard, left tackle. What uh, BB is going to be your center. You know, if draft picks get first dibs. You know, if, I, I ain't putting no free agent in front of you. I mean, it's like a veteran walk in, a veteran get first dibs. It may not last long, but that's that's who that's who uh get first dibs. So uh they'll they'll see, you know, let's say Guyton is a little slow at comprehending what's in the in the in the classroom, or the coach you know, okay, I'm about to spend a little extra time with this guy, I'm about to put him on the field. You know, he you know, it, it, it's it's multiple ways to learn. And you could write it on the chalkboard. Mount Mark Stepnoski and Tua was good at that. You can uh, write it down, you know, and, and, and Big E was good at that. Once he wrote it down, uh, you can take it to the field. That's where I was good at. Once I got on the field, I walked through it, then I actually did it. Then that's when I was confident, Yeah. you know. So there's multiple ways you can learn. And that is Coach job to figure out, okay, I got a first round pick left tackle here. I got a third round pick uh, center here. How, what's the quickest way that they learn? How? What do I have to focus on to get this guy ready to be a player and to be and to get sixty five percent of the snaps on on my team on on my uh, offensive line? So each coach gonna be looking at each player, especially the draft picks, trying to figure out how do they fit in. What's, what's the quickest way he can learn and digest this system so I can get him up and running for the team? All right, so you mentioned there's just going to be a bunch of free agents there at virtually every position. How do they separate themselves? I imagine some of them are going to come in full of you know fire and vinegar and all that, and, they, no. and they're going to try to get noticed. Is there is there anything they can do, not being a draft pick, at rookie camp where the coaches will go? Don't repeat the mistakes of the guys that go before you. That is what Marquise Bell came in, and he had this pack down. Kid from the Florida a and When I first watched him three years ago or two years ago, I went, I went out and I watched him. I said, okay, what's going to separate Marquise Bell from the rest of these guys? Uh, he, he saw where a guy would misstep, he would not take that step. When he came up in line, he was ready. Coach like, yeah, this is what I want. Well, he would let two or three guys always go before him. If they mess up, he ain't even finna mess up. He was a one-time get-it-right guy. And then he remembered that. He took it into the next day, and he built on that. And so guy, when coaches see that, like, okay, he, he can learn from that. He can learn from us. But you're like a backup, a great, the greatest backup quarterbacks. And you'll hear coaches, and coaches are, are switch teams and are bringing these type guys, guys that can mentally – Get it. They can do mental reps. Uh, Wilson, the receiver, remember him a couple of years ago and I went to yes. Miami? 
That yeah. is what Coach McCarthy <laughs> loved about him. He could get no reps at the slot and come in and run all the slot routes. He could get, okay. you know, and so that is what gives a, a free agent, a uh, guy that's been drafted in the fourth, fifth, or sixth round, because he'll see and he'll understand and he'll do that extra work to make sure that he understands what the play is and how to do it. What's the proper steps to get it done? Now, uh, you were wide eyed, you know, for various reasons. This group, and again, I know the college game now is so different. Yes. Um, you know, they're not with metal lockers and a wooden, bl- you know, bench anymore, uh, you know, like you were. But, but uh, will they be e- even wide eyed walking into that? That, uh, you know, rock locker room at the star with, you know, helmet cleaners and all that kind of yeah, stuff. These, and, you know, everything's guys, looking like an art room in there. A guy, a lot of guys come from pretty locker rooms. They yeah. come from uh, grade A programs and even the smaller schools, not the HBCUs and all that. They have nice locker rooms, TVs, all, you know, all, everybody got it. But you can never equal walking into the Dallas Cowboys locker room. You can never equal walking into the mystique of the Kansas, of the Kansas City Chiefs locker room. You can never equal going into the Green Bay Packers and the lore and the, and the mystique of going into what, because you ain't it. You trying to be it. See, uh, they can pay them all the money they want at Bama. They can pay them all the money they want at Auburn. They can pay them all of the money they want at Texas. You ain't it. After four years, if you're not drafted in the NFL, we forget about you. Only the guys that go on to the NFL will be remembered in that time slot. That's how they go. And then, even then, yes. like now you got there, you've made it. You got to have success, and yes. and you know certainly the one that comes to mind, first year player, Mozzie. Right. Yes. He's got to be better to be it. He's not it yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's what I tell people. The the drawback to being a cowboy is number one, the media. Number two, the fans. That ruins a lot of kids, you know, because the media don't come in and ask you, what are you going to do? Well, they ask it. They ask that question. What are you going to do to be a better player? What are you going to do? Like the Ravens ask their draft picks. Once they come in, ownership, management, and coaches say, what do we need to do to help you get better? They make you start thinking right away when you walk in the door. Oh, my God. What do I need to do? This coach asking me, so they can focus on what you need to do to get better. A lot of times when we walk into, as a first round pick, Guyton, he got shoulder red carpet. Nobody challenged him. Nobody said, hey man, uh, what, what, what do we need to do? And I, I'm, I'm not saying the coaches don't do that. I'm not in there. But uh, before you know it, if Guyton have a little success, then he's compared to Tyron Smith. He's compared mm-hmm. to this guy and that guy and this guy, and he's only played one or two seasons. And now this guy becomes, okay, he doesn't get any better. See, that that is that is what hurts a lot of guys, not only with the Cowboys, but other teams. Once your name get in lights, once you get your brand established, do you get better? Do you take the next steps? And that's what I'm always so fearful of, a guy coming to the Cowboys, a guy going to the University of Texas, a guy going to the University of Michigan, a guy going to the University of Florida. Things are so baby caked for you and so already put in place. Will you drive yourself like this kid down in San Antonio, the big rookie of the year? You know, you heard him say, I am so fortunate to be in this position. Come on, man, 19 years old, rookie of the year, almost four block shots a game, 19 points. This kid, like, I got a lot of work to do. You rarely ever hear a Dallas Cowboy player say, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah. 
in some ways. That's one of the criticisms, right? Since the times when you and and your guys were winning Super Bowls, it it has in some ways, it's gotten um, so uh, opulent and so beautiful and so luxurious around there. It's almost like it's softer. Yes. And and, and, and it's not, you can't say this is the league now because why is the Ravens so physical? Why is the 49ers so physical? Why can Green Bay get physical? Why can Kansas City Chiefs get physical? Why do the Pittsburgh Steelers still base their whole they whole uh, part of uh, a part of their draft is this guy? Can this guy mentally and physically get tough? And uh, I'm not saying that the Cowboy players cannot be that. That is why they brought Zim in there. That is why they're drafting different styles of offensive linemen. That's why they tried to hope that Mozzie would be this physical guy. That's why Zim drafted a few guys that uh, run first guys. That one big kid I was reading on about Auburn, run stopping first, getting physical, getting mean. So when, when times get hard, you can adjust. You mentioned Zim. That's a place I wanted to go. Uh, you know, one of the few free agents they signed uh, was, of course, his, you know, his former player, Eric Kendricks, the linebacker, big, strong linebacker, which you all also said they needed even before they hired Zim at the end of last season. Um, so and he has, you know, he's embracing it. Right. He's come out and said, yeah, man, I am ready to uh, teach all my teammates what Zim expects, because he said it. He goes, this is a complicated defense. Now, we remember Zim here. We know it's also physical, right? And we know he's also old school. So what do you expect change-wise from this defense? Just to be where you're supposed to be. You know, uh, we wasn't a big defense last year. We were a defense that moved around a lot. We stunned and we gamed. Uh, I don't. I, we didn't blitz blitz a whole lot, but uh, they they brought different people at different times. But the, the defensive line was always moving, always stunting, always hitting gaps. Well, Zim may not do that as much, but he's gonna ask you to adjust up front as a defensive line, as a linebacker situation. Uh, uh, the defensive backs have no other choice but with all the motion in the game today, they have no other choice but to continue to move and to, and to, uh, to always make an adjustments. But a lot of times fronts won't adjust. You know, they'll do a slight movement, move a guy from head up to outside, up to inside. Uh, they may, you know, they may not get up and uh, move all the way around, uh, you know, for like go from a three technique outside the guard, all the way over to the center. But Zim may ask guys to do that periodically. He just wants you to be mentally ready to play your gap, play your responsibility. Uh, whereas you may be frank, freelance a little bit more with Coach Quinn. He's not, Coach, Coach is not going to allow that. He's not going to allow that until you prove to him that you understand what his defense is about, where you're supposed to be, and then – when you learn how to read the formations of the offense and learn what the percentages of what plays they run off of those formations, then he will allow you to say, okay, what did you see here to make you shoot that gap? And you better be ready to explain it. Because if not, he's going to tell you to play the damn defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, that starts from Michael Parsons. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. We Who's a find out, yeah, we're going to find out if you're a team player. Uh, if, is you do you want to really win, or do you want to win uh, when you have good games, mm-hmm. or when you have two and three sacks? Like I tell people, I, I love Parsons uh, to death as an athlete and what he's capable of doing, but this kid has not reached his potential because you know your your twenty pass, your twenty sacks don't impress me. That don't change enough games. But if you become that run defender that I know you can be, brother, you will be an unlimited player. So uh, Eric Kendricks tells a funny story of his rookie year. It was a training camp, and they're in you know some sort of a 
play, you know, we're playing against 11 on 11 right now. And he said there was, there was a, a defensive call with the Vikings when Zim was the head coach, you know, he was his head coach. There's a defensive call that they had was caribou was a nickname caribou. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Eric gets out there. He says, man, I blanked. I'm, you know, middle linebacker. So I'm calling it. And I say circus, you know, he said, yeah. I knew it was a C word. I couldn't remember it. So yeah. I just said circus. Zim blows the whistle, man, stops the whole thing down, practice goes silent, and he goes, what the F is circus? <laughs> right. You know, embarrass the kid, you know, he's like, oh, man, coach, I forgot. You can't forget, you know, right, like, and right. that, that's Zim. You know, that's what we remember about Zim. You see, the thing is, when you, as a player, expect to be coached and coached hard, Zim is not a uh, cuss guy to just cuss. He's not an MF guy just to do that. But he is that guy that, hey, man, I love you to death, but I can't allow you to wreck this defense because in turn that wrecks the team. If you're not going to be responsible and do your job, see, I tell people, the quicker you learn the defense and the little nuances about the defense, the more, the faster you can play, the quicker your athletic ability can take over. Now you can take that calculated chance, that 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 game changing chance. But until you do that, you gotta be disciplined. You gotta know where everybody's at, especially the guys that's playing to your side. If you're the right defensive t- defensive end, you gotta know what that tackle doing. You got to kind of know what that outside linebacker doing. You got to know what that mic backer doing. You got to kind of know if that if you if you in coordinate with a blitz with your corner so you won't be in the wrong gap. You got to know. Okay. And and, so and when you make those big mistakes, it costs you especially in the run game. You know, the back mm-hmm. end is what it is. We got a nice back end. We just got to sort up this front end, especially at the linebacker position and sure. in the one yeah. technique over the center. Yeah. So is that is that aspect of it needing to know what your your teammate is doing and where to expect him to be? Is that what makes this more complicated? That's the only thing. Yeah. That's the only thing because even though guys had responsibilities last year, they could they 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 took liberties. They took liberties and it hurt. Especially when it came time to lock down and 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 and, and dictate I mean, dictate to a team you're not going to run. You have no other choice but to pass. You're not going to run. Yep. And that is what Zim is, is went out and got is some guys that could possibly stop the run. Uh, uh, the, the linebacker from Notre Dame, Maurice, I can't pronounce his last name, the cornerback yeah, from Wake Leofu, Forest. Leofu, I think. Yeah, d- he went out and got guys that can – Stop the run. There's Justin Rogers from Auburn, uh, seventh round pick. He, yeah. he going he he Zim gonna get this guy reps. If this guy come in and be a run stopping guy, he gonna give him reps. The thing that hurt every guy that came in was every guy eventually thought they were sack masters. Mm-hmm. You came in to stop the run, son. Now all of a sudden everybody think they sack masters. Because when you I give you a perfect example. Dirk, when Dirk first got to the to uh, the Mavericks, three point mid range, Dirk was lighting folks up. And a little general got fired. You know, the little general got fired. Yeah. He he forced Dirk to go into the middle. He for, forced him to do to host up and, and 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 he got fired but when they made that championship run you get you you didn't know where Dirk was going to line up mm-hmm. and when you don't know when your star is going to line up that makes everybody else say man Dirk is now getting rebounds Dirk is now posting up Dirk getting the defensive rebound that made everybody else fall in line if your yeah. stars fall in line and do what is correct then no, everybody else has no other choice. Yeah. And I Avery like knew. Timberwolves. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Avery knew that's that's what you need with the seven footer because he had played on a championship team with no less than David Robinson and Tim Duncan in right. San Antonio. Right. right. I mean, that's how that, that that's the Tim Duncan. Yes, was the model of that position at that day. Right. But Dirk, but Dirk revolutionized it. Yes, now these did. kids like Wembenyama, who are out there, you know, you know, shooting the three, bringing the ball up the floor. Dirk was the first one who extended yeah. that deal where the yes. big man would be out there shooting yes. threes. Yes, and see, even the kid in San Antonio, even he blocked shots. Even he yeah. posted up the complete player. <clears throat> and when you had a complete player, now you can really build your team. And and that's yeah. what I'm. And you hear me say this. You know, and anybody that watched my podcast, you know, not my podcast, but our podcast, let me tell you something. I'm going to always be on Parsons because I don't want this kid to leave up out of this league six years from now, seven years from now, and not really expose himself to a real MVP. The sack numbers are not going to do it. But right. he can get interceptions. He can get fumble recovers. He can call from – like the kid from – um. From the Steelers. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. The Watts kid. This kid is a different kid, man. He, yeah. can, he, he can take over games. Joy Bosa can take over games. Sacks, hits for losses, uh, fumble recoveries, cause fumbles, interception here and there. And this is what the ability that Parsons have. You know, but everybody gets so caught up in the sack numbers. But what happens when... The team said, okay, we want to beat Dallas, and we really want to beat Dallas. We're going to run the ball. Mm -hmm. And I hate yeah. to keep going back to that. No, it's true. and and uh, But, again, you know as well as I do, one of the reasons Micah wants those sack numbers is because you get paid by sack numbers, Nate. It's part of the business, isn't it? I mean, you, you know, and the coaches are the ones that have to make sure that you realize there's more to it than this. Uh, but, yes. but that's where that's the statistic that pays on the defensive side oh, yeah. of the football. Yeah, it does. But would you rather have uh, 17 sacks, four interceptions, 20 hits for losses, uh, six former recoveries, uh, just 20 sacks, and that's it. Yeah. See, because now and when you go to the coach and he said, well, we don't know if we can pay if Parsons. The coach went, uh-huh. Man, mm -hmm. this dude got me six fumbles. This dude mm -hmm. got me three interceptions and plus mm -hmm. 15 sacks. Come on, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a complete player. And he freed yeah. up, he freed up this other kid to get 10 sacks. Uh-uh, we need him. Well, yep. all he gets is 20. Well, come on, man. See, coach, uh, the coach, the old coach for the New England Patriots used to manufacture a lot of sacks for guys. I mean, he never had that 20 sack guy, but he would manufacture a lot of sacks. You know, if you just got guys willing to play their role, uh, but when you got a guy that can turn that ball over, uh, give you uh, interceptions here and there, take over games, by, you know, it's, it's a different light, you know, and that's why, that's why I think Parsons got that type of skill set, but it's just does he want to explore it. And, you know, he's been uh, early in his career, and I, uh, comparisons are always unfair, but he's been compared somewhat to, uh, especially the way he burst onto the scene, to Lawrence Taylor. Now, you played against LT, and you know he was not just a sack guy. No, nah, no. Nah. This dude can hurt you so many different ways. Uh, yeah. You had to always know where he was. Now, you have to always know where Parsons at, but Parsons limited it himself. He said, I'm, I'm going to be right over here on this right side rushing. Every now and then, I'm going to go over to the left. And all we got to do is just say, uh, swing. When he swing over there, just swing the protection over there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> flip. He flip over there, we flip the protection. Lawrence can line up in the middle of the field. Lawrence can line up over the tackle. Lawrence can line up over the center. And they do, do a little bit of that. But Lawrence can also smash the run. Mm. Mm. You know, and he can also drop back in coverage, even though he didn't do that in the lateral part of his career. He gets to drop back. You know, people always think uh, you hear every time uh, if Lawrence ain't rushing, that's a positive. Not always. Not in his younger part of his career. 
because he could get an interception. I think he took one back 97 yards one time for a TD. This mm-hmm. kid was – but his man was different. Bowls are, bowls are like that, man. Uh, they different. They, they, they take over games. They do what is necessary, man. Uh, Watts is like that. They, they take over games. They get that ball on the ground and, and, give, and give you that ball back. You know, and I understand sacks a lot of times leads to interceptions or fumbles, but these other guys are doing it. Yeah, sure. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this, uh, this NBA series. Mavericks still alive. We've only seen one game. Last week I was saying I, I thought the Mavs might be able to beat the Thunder as good as the Thunder have been. Didn't look like it in game one, did it, Nate? Well, and, and let's, let's, let's get this out of the way. The Mavericks are notorious for losing game ones for some reason. True. Game True. ones, they, oh, man, they are notorious. But this ain't the Clippers. No. The, these guys ain't going to have a, a, a plep, you know, uh, Kawhi came in and just threw off the whole rhythm of the Clippers. Right. Then he left. Clippers fell back in place, but it was too late. Uh, by that time, Kawhi had found his legs. Uh, Luca, Luca, Luca really did a master job of kind of taking a step back, uh, whether it was by his, uh, whether it was by his knee, uh, just the game plan of letting Kawhi help him a little bit more. Kawhi has matured a little bit. They work well You're talking together. Talking about Kyrie, yeah, yes, Kyrie, me. Kyrie. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, because there was one, there was one in the same guys for a minute. Kyrie and Kawhi yeah. was one in the same. Yeah. One was injury, and the other was attitude. But anyway, yeah, exactly. Uh, Kyrie has matured, <laughs> like what he's doing, but uh, defense has been the key word for this NBA, this early NBA playoffs. Everybody that has defense along with the offense, not offense, along with the defense, the New York Knicks, the Timberwolves, the Thunder. Those are offensive teams that plays great defense, not average, great defense, and they can turn it on uh, team-wise, and they got great point of attack defense, one-on-one defense. So in this playoffs, the early buzzword has been defense. When in the last yeah. time you've heard that? Defense? I know. It's been a bit about high scoring, uh, who can get the most threes off. Well, I think the difference in this Thunder team is the fact that they got they will play defense and they will they pressure you and they yeah. will keep coming at you. Yeah. I watched every game and and covered them of the Thunder's uh, series with the Pelicans. They were still on Valley Sports Oklahoma then, and uh, they played 48 minutes of defense without a lapse for four straight games, which you never see. I mean, they even had a lapse in game one against the Mavs when the Mavs got all the way back to to within one after it was about a 10-point halftime lead. You know, there was some lapses Mm -hmm. defensively there. Man, there were none in that series against the Pelicans. So, uh, But it'll be interesting to see if they can sustain that defense. But that is the thing, too, and you know the old saying, Nate, offense wins games, defense wins championships. You know, that's – and you've got to take and all season all we heard about the nba oh man nobody plays any defense and again i was on the thunder coverage over the course of the year and even then i was like well the thunder play a little defense and now they've just ramped it up because that's what it takes to win in the playoffs can the mavs match that defensive intensity you know i, I listen to a lot of shows because I, I try to gain knowledge from guys that have done it guys like yourself that goes out and researches and talks to the proper people to get the right information out to the people. And, and what I've understood is everybody's went through 82 games of pity pat foot, pity pat basketball. And now in the first round, the, the defense got a little tighter and the refs swallowed the whistle a little bit more. Now in the second round, well, ever since the all-star game, the defense, is, the, the refs has been tightened, you know, been, you know, letting the, loose, the whistles not blow as much. Now each round, it looks like it's getting a little bit more physical. And teams that cannot uh, make that adjustment from regular season to the first round to the second round, they're kind of suffering. Uh, 
I wonder what the coaches are telling them. I mean, what is the Timberwolves? What is Denver coaching? You heard Denver coach, man, suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, quit crying. I mean, you saw the kid uh, merge it, throw towels, throw hot water bottles, hot water bags or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I Mike mean, Malone having none of that. Yeah. yeah. And last yeah. night you see, you see Luca get injured. Yeah. And during the break, he goes, he tells the trainer, I don't need you. He goes and gets the official. <laughs> Luca, I love you, man. <laughs> Luca wins to get the official and talk to the yeah. official during the whole break. And because the defense is too suffocating. I want to ask you this question. Uh, is Do you like this type of basketball or do you want the regular season basketball? Or do you want man, this good, hardcore, getting your face defense basketball? Which that, one do you desire the most? You I like remember, playoff basketball. You, yeah, you got to remember, I, my er, first thing in my career, one of the first things I covered in my career was the bad boys. You right, know, right. Uh, Isaiah yeah. and, and Bill Lambeer and, and Rick Mahone, Mahorn, yeah. you know, all those guys. Man, and that was a lock down defense that they were holding folks to 80 in the 80s in right. the 70s right? right i love this style of basketball i wish that the referees would let them play it during the regular season so i am i'm a kid in a candy store this time of year and i thought it would you know i mean again the the, the mavericks is as prolific as their offense has been and in, in especially in the 16 to 2 run at the end of the year you know the thunder held them to 95 points in game one come wow. on i just I, I, I don't understand as athletic and as good as all of these guys is. The coach, the great coach uh, John Wooden said, offense is easy. Everybody wants to score, so people work on it. He say defense is a will, a mindset. Yep. You know, if your mind, if it don't matter, if your mind, if it don't matter in your mind, you can do it. But if it matters in your mind, oh, I got to exert myself a little bit this way to try to stop a guy from scoring instead of versus letting me have the ball to score, hey, you got you to gotta make a decision. These teams, the Mavericks, the Denver Nuggets, uh, the, uh, the Cavaliers, they got to make up their mind. Yeah. They got to make up their mind because – these other teams are playing great defense along with their offense. Nate, that's fantastic uh, analysis on the basketball, too. Will you go to the rookie camp? Oh, yeah, I'll be there either Friday or Saturday. Yes, I, I, I want to see these guys. And good, plus, good. I need to talk to Zim and I need to talk to Mike Solari to just to see where he's, where they, what's their mindset for these kids. You know, uh, I'd, I'd like you to go up uh, up to Guyton and put the fear of God into him and, and uh, Cooper Beebe as oh, well, too. Hold on, man. Hold on. You telling me at six foot two and a half, 261 pounds to go up to six foot seven, 310. I'm 62 You're years old. Newton. This man no, backhand no. me. I have to get a work. <laughs> <laughs> get a walker to I get want out you to walk up to him and say, I'm Nate Newton. I got three Super Bowl rings and I got two good knees now. Yeah, if I so, was 340 pounds like on. I used to be, I would get in his chest. But now I got two <laughs> surgically repaired knees that's been a, that's on less than hey. eight weeks out. Oh, I'm staying away from the kids. Hey, this young man would still, uh, he would show you respect. You go tell him what needs to be done, Nate. Oh, yeah. I'm going I'm to work on uh, this camp. I'm, hey, I will go out there with Coach Shalari and work with these kids because my Good. leg, Good. hey, my knees will be right, man. But, uh, awesome. hey, I love you. I love you, man. I love what uh, Spence has done in producing us early this morning. I love you, yes, uh Raz, man, and we'll talk a little hockey. And yeah. We'll talk a little baseball next time because I would like to know. You said the Rangers over five, over five hundred five games. Is is the Stars where they're at in this? Yeah, they they lost in overtime game one, tough one. They yeah. lost at home in overtime, but like the Mavericks, the Stars lost you know game one of round one too. Yeah. So and the, you know hockey, man, it's just it's yes. one bounce, you okay. know. But here's the only problem with the Stars. Like, real quick, they got three goals in the first period and never got another one. Wow. And Colorado scored basically, you know, 
four goals after after they had three. So uh, anyway, but it was a good game, and um, we will. We'll talk more of that next week, and we'll always talk Cowboys on Let Me Tell You Something, too, won't we, Nate? Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. We love you, fans. Uh, always come in. We got other shows that we do. Uh, we we cover the four major sports, and <coughs> excuse me. And what is, excuse me, we're the Playmakers now, right? Yes, sir. Playmaker Network. We go to the Playmaker Network. We're the number one. We are coming. We're up and rising, just like the Thunder, just like the Timberwolves, and just like my Boston Celtics, baby. Young and up and coming. All right. (laughs) All right, Nate. We'll see you next week, my brother. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed day.